at the age of 14, I was given this assignment by an English teacher to do a book report. So I went to the library, I found this book called Malcolm X, and I thought, I had no idea who Malcolm X was. This is way before the movie and the whole kind of iconic rebirth of Malcolm took place. You know, when I started reading Malcolm, that was the first time that I've ever had to negotiate my whiteness. I thought it was a cool name because it rhymed. Malcolm X, you know, rocking the deck, cashing checks, breaking necks, fools I wreck, you know, it was like an infinite number of potential rhymes you could do with that name. So I chose that book. I remember reading him and thinking, man, this dude is crazy, man. Like, how the heck is he gonna call someone a white devil? And, you know, the, the way he talked about white people was something I had never seen before, or heard before. That, for me, was an awakening in my life about white and whiteness, the meaning of whiteness, white male privilege, even though I was young. And it wasn't easy, like Malcolm and I would spar, you know, and eventually I found myself really moved by his story. And I would say that really I had left um, Christianity probably when I was around that age because I found a number of what I felt were unanswered questions and then contradictions within that, that tradition. And I would say really in the shadow of Malcolm, even though I'm a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white guy, I think we are moved by people who are so committed to universal causes that they have a universal outcome and a universal impact. March 3rd, 1991, is really what caused me to start to look for the truth. That's the day where Rodney King was brutalized and the collective conscience of America for the first time was exposed to first-hand treatment of black America at the hands of a power structure. People heard about it up until that time and people had maybe read about it, but to actually see it, those agitating moments that make us uncomfortable, we have really two ways to go. Either we're going to conform to the easy way, or we're going to stand up and address ourselves and be honest with ourselves. I was motivated by Malcolm, pushed, I would say, head first by what happened with Rodney King. And I was reading the Quran at that time in the restroom of my home, scared that my mother would find it. And I found that in Islam, I mean, the first or second verse, of the first chapter says, praise be to Allah, the Lord of all things, you know, and God is not white or black or any color. And then in the back of the Quran, the last chapter is, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of humanity. So the source of removing oppression was the Lord of all things, of all human beings. I never did hate anybody hard. I do know that when I wrote that letter saying that there were white people in Mecca, it shook up a lot of Muslims because most of the Muslims who follow Mr. Muhammad absolutely believed that it was impossible, physically impossible, I should say divinely impossible, for a white person to go to Mecca. Uh, and my trip there uh, shattered that image or that misconception. 